Hello, all you fine bronies and Pegasisters. Welcome to the NBS show. I'm your host, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill. But I'm not alone in this venture into insanity. Oh, no. If I go down, I'm taking someone with me. And that someone else is podcaster and planeswalker extraordinaire Norman Sanzo. Read the text. It always helps. Wait, where did that word go? Uh, Silver, did you erase the word on my script? Maybe. You evil, evil person, you. Yeah. And we are also joined by our resident Pokemon mascot, Sapphire Heartsong. I think, Norman, the problem is that he used the parental locks on you. No! That's right, Norman. I am in total control of your computer, which means no no browsing after 10 o'clock. Uh, it's bedtime. You evil, evil person, you. Oh. <laughs> then how am I supposed to read out one of my dark fan fiction? You make it up in your head and go from there. Ah! But what we envision in our heads is often more frightening than reality. As is a theme in today's comic, we're going to be looking at a three-part arc, Shadow Play, issues 51 through 53 of IDW's My Little Pony main series. This coming right after the Chaos Theory arc, which left people pretty, pretty sour. And so this comic had a lot to live up to. The general theme of this is that a new character, a stallion named uh, Shadowlock, is running about Equestria erasing history. And it's up to the main six to stop him before he basically erases all memory of what has come before. And so, before we dive into this, we're going to just go with general impressions. Norman, what did you think of this here comic? Hmm, well, here's the thing. Um, I've read an article on the Equestria Dailies mentioning that this issue would be t- uh, a tie-in with Season 7. And I think before we hit into this review and so on, I, I think Season 7 in general seems to be the season of tie-ins because there's a lot of tie-in episodes that correlate to the comics. And one of the few things that they did was, okay, um, Issue 54, where the animal shelter thing, the uh, Fluttershy uh, animal shelter episode, and the Legends of Magic series, and even the recent Friendship is Magic comic, and the recent episode that came out, um, they seem to be having a lot of tie-ins, and Season 7, and starting from Issue 51 and onwards, seems to be the season of tie-ins. And that's fascinating. They never did that before. Norman, I think you forgot your script because you said tie-ins more than like three times, I think. Because it's a tie-in. Anyway, um... Is this like Candyman? Say tie-in into a mirror three times and you get a comic book? (laughs) Yay! No, but, um, in all honesty, my impression of this book was... Oh, righty then. Um, interesting premise, interesting concept. Yet, the villain here, uh... Why OC much? He he looks <laughs> he looks like an OC. Like oh god, with the scar on his face, the brooding cloak thing. Oh god, he's so OC. All he needed was a red mane and a black coat. Oh, and an organization number. And he, there, perfect OC. We get it. You're sad. So dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? Sad. Very sad. Never going to miss a chance to do this voice. <coughs> Although, now I just realized it. If you look into a mirror and say tie-in three times, Tyan Daga will appear. <laughs> oh, don't even joke. You better tell him that. <laughs> he just shows up. What the? Oh, uh, he's busy. Biggie Smalls, Biggie Smalls, Biggie Smalls. They are strong, they are strong, they are strong. Oh, hey. That w- Man, every probably would be making a run on the... Uh... <laughs> On the uh, mirrors, if that were true. <laughs> or Tara Strong. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Or Tara Strong would just be like, what is going on? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> oh, wow. But anyway, so, Sefi, what did you think of Young Shadow Play arc? Well, I definitely call this, like, based on the premise and the name Shadow Lock, I call this the parental lock um, arc because this whole entire thing revolves around censoring history and whatnot, it reminds me of China, because oh, wow. one thing I've learned from Chinese class back in eighth grade is, according to my Chinese teacher, who is from China, 
apparently, if you were to look up Tiananmen Square, you would only see happy pictures <laughs> of, like, the park itself. You would not see any of the dark historical factors that would go into what happened at that area. So I definitely call this the parental lock arc because of, you know, Shylock's main purpose of the story is to censor everybody from history because reasons. of, well, spoiler reasons I cannot say. Spoiler reasons. And I think that we should... That just reminds me of parental blocking. <laughs> like, dang it, Mom, I wanted to go on... That's not a word! No, 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 no. Sweetie Bot's going to censor that word. That's not a word! As in the vegetable I know, but Sweetie Bot's going to censor that and it'll be much more funnier. (laughs) I didn't know you you swung that way about produce, (laughs) Safi. I've learned something new about you I had to find some way to get around the parental lock cough cough Sweetie Bot anyways. (laughs) So, I, I call it that just because of it. Although, in this comic, I enjoyed the... Um, the references to real life, you know, it's real life counterparts to certain books that I've had to read throughout high school and whatnot. Oh, not the whatnot. Um, yes, and whatnot. I say that a lot, and whatnot. But it seemed like there was a lot of fourth wall breaking in this comic, and I think it did it just right to where it was actually fresh. So I enjoyed that. Funky oh. fresh? <laughs> Why don't you take me to Funky Town? <laughs> but anywho, Silver, what about you, my friend? I enjoyed this. I, I will say that when you read this comic, especially without the month-long breaks in between, you recognize the patterns very swiftly. It basically means six go to a location, hair off, hijinks, lather, rinse, repeat. But it does it, it does offer uh, an interesting character in Shadowlock. Yes, his design is very much... A lot of people said, oh, he's got a scar. Oh, how brooding. I found his character interesting all the same. We don't know a lot about him by Comic's End, but he is far more interesting than the usual, mwahaha, I'm going to conquer the world for me. Yeah, true that, but most of the conflict with him is self-inflicted. Well, that's I think that's true of many of us. Eh, true. We are our own worst enemies. Yeah, true. But I, I, I think I'll explain why in detail later when we talk about him. Except for me, I'm everyone's worst enemy. <laughs> no, you're not. You're my best buddy. You know the saying: keep your friends close, your enemies closer. I'm keeping you very close. Oh my! So what the shipping commence? So he's your enemy, Norman. No, he's my yes, he friend of me. Friend of me. Oh. First. <laughs> My little pony, <laughs> frenemies are magic something. I still admire you as a person. <laughs> well, there's your first mistake. I don't care. But anywho, so now that we've now that we've gone over the basic thoughts, it's time to dive into the neck deep into spoiler territory. You do not want to be spoiled, so you should go and re- read IDW issues fifty one. Through 53. And also, by the way, I need to point out that this is also a Patreon-sponsored review, thanks to Name Dragatorius. Thank you, my friend, for the support. And shall we? Nah, nah. Name Dragatorius, Name Dragatorius. Nah, nah. Just had to get that out of the way. All right, so we open up with the main six coming out of a movie theater, or perhaps a... No, it's a play. I don't know... Equestria is weird. You never know if they've really got TVs rolling. But they definitely have theater, and we've seen a movie theater. And they have arcades, so you know what? It's, it's all the confusing. It's timey-wimey stuff. It's so confusing. Mm. But anywho, Twilight Sportin' a little bride of Frankenstein main there. <laughs> True that. Can I just... Of all, the, of all the hairdos Twilight's had, none of them have looked bad in my eyes. Oh, yeah. They're fascinating. Until now. Until now. Eh, even then, this is kind of funny, especially when it has Marge Simpson levels of TARDIS technology. <laughs> Hiding an entire spike. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, well, it is wide enough. Although, how did she get that much hair is my question, because, I don't know, Twilight's hair has always been kind of flat. I, I didn't know she had that much hair until now. This could be the start of her eloquent powers. You know how the princess's mane flows uh, purporeally. This could be the start. 
The only time where I would think that she could possibly have any form of TARDIS hair is in her Equestria Girl style, because that's when she gets a bunch of hair. The Equestria Girls, your hoodies, are the true TARDIS. Just look at the sirens. (laughs) (laughs) But who's to say that Sidewise Bun couldn't get an entire puppy? Who Who could say? Who can say? But back to the main thing, which is the main six. Uh, basically, they just saw, what was it? Bride of, not, uh, the bridal of Frankenstein. Ah, see what they did there? Uh, uh, uh. uh. And, Sp- and Spike and Twilight have a discussion about the concept of fear on the way back to their castle that makes me afraid for my eyes. It doesn't look that bad. Heather Breckel did a good job with the coloring on this one. Uh, this one, well, I don't mean to critique... I'm not saying Heather Breckel's artwork is bad. I'm just saying the castle's design still has not grown on me. <laughs> uh, true that. But it, the idea is that what you fear in your mind is often worse than the reality. They also make it clear when they see that the front door is open, Starlight Glimmer is in Canterlot. So she's not going to be a part of this comic. Convenient. Well, after, after all the hoopla about... Uh, about the end of Chaos Theory, where Starlight was basically the only pony with any usefulness, I'm kind of glad they're giving her some breathing room. Give everyone else a chance just to calm the frig down. But they go in, and of all things, one, suddenly everything turns very gray. There's a gray hue to the entire interior. It's almost like a rainbow bright villain came through. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, and it seems that it says the tone for something sinister will happen. Yeah. Yeah, something bad is going to happen. Yeah, like the introduction of Shadowlock. Oh, God. Boom. Yes, let's just pause to drink him in the giant hood that conveniently has holes cut for his ears. That's very fashionable and functional. But it's classed with Twilight Sparkle's cutie mark. Oh, the shipping. This is a guy who, big gray stallion, he's got fetlocks like Big Macintosh. Uh, he looks a little bit like a background pony called Written Script with a purple mane and gray coat. He's a unicorn, and most of all, he's got this big old scar across the, his snout. Now, I have to ask, guys, scars are pretty much a very big identifier for characters over the over the ages. Why does having a scar here make him, oh, he's just an OC? The ideas of scar is something traumatic happened to you, or something bad happened to you. And in the world of My Little Pony... For you to have a scar slash a broken horn, something very, very, very bad must have happened to you. And here, him and knowing what we know now doesn't really warrant that scar. Savvy, what are your thoughts on his on his design? Edgy, edgy, edgy. Edgy, edgy, edgy. edgy. You cannot handle this edge. That's all I can say. It's edgy, edgy, edgy. (laughs) Alrighty then. Well. Onwards with the edginess, because it turns out that, of all things, Shadowlock here has great magical power over books. And so he basically attacks Twilight with her own library. Irony! <laughs> books, why do you suddenly hate me? Books, uh, I thought we had something. I thought we had something beautiful. I thought we I had you... something special. <gasps> Again, how could this happen to me? I've made my mistakes, got nowhere to run. I'm glad she knows that song better than I. Okay, here, guys, I need to point something out before the comment do. And, okay, things would have been easily solved if Flash was there guarding the house. Simple. Have a few guards, including well, Flash, done. Yeah, well, Flash ain't here. <laughs> More than that, remember we're talking about Canterlot guards. How useful are they, really? I mean, here's the thing. If you have a few guards at the door taking care of it, that's fine. If they get knocked out, it's Candlelight Guards. You know. uh. Oh, oh, that's a great attitude, Norman. What's your healthcare view on them? Like, eh, if they die, (laughs) meh. (laughs) Meh. 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 This is actually a conversation. (laughs) Uh, but anywho, but anywho, basically he gets away, and this this surprises me. Rather than giving chase, Twilight calls everyone over for a sleepover. Safety in numbers. Safety in numbers. But what happened to 
you mess with my books, I'm going to break you. Yeah, really. Oh, true. I forgot season four existed. That's my head can. <laughs> you mess with my books, you get the hooks. <laughs> uh, but still, um, yeah, th- this is one of those strange parts where uh, Starlight, you, you can fly. Um, okay, uh, granted, you need to help Spike, but couldn't you, you know, um, chase after? I mean, he didn't use a huge teleportation spell. They did. They, they even referenced that in the comics later on. I, I think a few pages away. So yeah, Twilight, this is all on you. Yeah, so it's just strange that uh, Twilight, who's usually such a go-getter, action heroine, uh, she's just sort of chilling as they reorganize the library. They cannot and... be unorganized! Never! Although, Twilight does just kind of dismiss that he stole history books from her. No spell books, just history books. Which is kind of impressive that he was able to select just the history books out of that collection. Maybe Twilight did too good a job organizing them. True that. I mean, she is the queen of organization. When I think when Twilight dismissed Shadowlock here, history books on their own don't really do much except, you know, learning about history of certain things. Like Twilight mentioned, oh, maybe she, um, this character guy here wants to learn about the history of ex-villain, like Sombrero or... Sombrero? So on. Yeah, you know. But, I so. I would probably be somewhat concerned if somebody would steal like something from me, especially if you're stealing from a library. Then again, if it's a personal library, then yeah, I I would be mad. I feel like she should have been more um concerned. Oh, I agree with that too. And I'll say, messing with history, as Safi points out, with uh, China and their censorship of things like Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square. Square. When you try to change history, you change how people view the world. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can change history to appreciate something we've ignored. Mm -hmm. But, uh, from an American standpoint, censoring Huck Finn, for example, saying, Oh, this has bad words in it. We must censor it. No, we got, I think we should own the fact that we talk, we talk like that. That word was a part of our culture and we have to own the good and the bad. That's my Mm -hmm. take. Yeah, and the thing about history is, and well, in all its gloriness, is that um, history is written by the victor. So you're, when you're changing history, you're kind of manipulating the battle that was fought over it. Is it true? Yeah. But comics. Yeah. Comics. Well, this guy's trying to rewrite history as well, as we'll see. Now, for some reason, we give one page to Pinkie Pie's dream where she gives both a surprise party uh, for a full moon fiesta, but then there's a party within a party for the Wonderbolts tailgate party. Oh, my. And why she suddenly wakes up? Um, I think somebody uh, woke her up. Like, you get to see that pinky wake up. And she drools in her sleep. (laughs) How cute, yet disgusting. And so we move on, and they're having pancakes for breakfast. We're having a pancake theme. There was Celestia with her pancakes, and now there's Twilight's uh, morning with her pancakes, although Rarity's having a grapefruit. Mm-hmm. Very healthy. I guess she's counting calories. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so it makes it fun that Pinky's right next to her with a sundae with what appears to be candy canes, sparklers, almonds. Ooh, I don't know why. <laughs> oh, you see here. And Rarity takes it in stride. Hmm. She just knows she'll count her own calories. She won't worry about her friend. True, true. But of all things, they have a tracking spell on this uh, saboteur. And so they go to the worst town in Equestria. It's not hyperbole. I think you could legitimately argue that this is the worst, most unhelpful town in all of Equestria. Oh, you want help? Well, you gotta wrestle, and you also have to pay for food. You know, or things that you probably don't want, but you probably need to in order to get information. Like, damn! <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I, I do agree with the whole unhelpful part, but this not at least has structure, unlike Starlight's Village. Eh, good point. Our town! Our town! Our town. 
But uh, I, I'd say this is actually worse because they, here the ponies of their own free will choose to be unhelpful. True that. Especially this cauldron bubble. Uh, cauldron bubble, rather. Yeah, Although, really. Uh, this, it, it reminds me. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say what reference I'm thinking of, mostly because it would make you guys cringe and I feel almost embarrassed thinking <laughs> back to this. Uh, I'll, I just remember the... For some reason, Cauldron Bubbles makes me think of a Mel Brooks uh, Dracula dead and loving it. Uh, you, know, you will be protected from the danger. Uh, Thank you. Although that's still, <laughs> still that's nothing like Frau Brooker. Uh, Cauldron Bubbles. What is this podcast, Stephen? It, it is us just being random. But anyway, I guess I can't fault the sweetie, the sweets store owner, who looks like a relative of Mrs. Cake. Yeah. Poor her. Like, she gets the worst out of the three. Like, at least Cauldron Bubble gets business, yet the sweets store owner gets Pinkie Pie and her mad cravings. And uh, I have to point something out here. Pinkie Pie in this issue or in this story set here irritates me. Oh? How so? Like, the, the writer for this story here didn't know what to do with Pinky, so instead of trying to make her coherent, they wrote her randomly, like how a bad episode would do. Mm. That's just how I view her. And especially in the sweet shop where she's kind of a candy zombie. Pinkie, out of all the ponies, you would think that Pinkie Pie would appreciate a store of candy and try not to destroy it. The last time she paired off with Rainbow for, I believe, uh, uh, Griffinstone, the lost treasure of Griffinstone, she paid for all those sweets on the truck, yeah, but on the train. True. And, and she did it, well, she paid for it first. And when it came time to baking or having scones... She was serious, like totally in the mood of, hey, uh, I'm a professional baker, so I need to do this right. And when Gilda said, friendship, uh, no, baking soda. Like, that took me out of loop. It's funny, but it's true. Although, adding some friendship to your baking never hurts. True that. Never hurts. And meanwhile, poor Applejack is having to wrestle a buffalo. Well, it's nice to see them back in the story. And I like this buffalo. He's sweet. He's very kind. And like, oh, well, I appreciate the warning, you know. It's actually really easy to sprint some, uh, something do, uh, doing this. <laughs> it's like, wow. Something, something dark side. Yeah. He's not even trying. And poor Applejack sweating. <laughs> but then there's Fluttershy, who's basically putting on her natural... Perhaps not even self-aware charms. One, or, you have to win a hoof wrestling, and she calls it a wrestling do. <laughs> Good lord! I won. I won, <laughs> and that and that love struck a stallion. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of somebody in the skull stares at silver. <laughs> uh, that was not subtle. <laughs> but yes, I I would throw a hoof wrestling competition to Fluttershy. <laughs> I would. I couldn't bear. I couldn't bear to to physically force her hoof one way or the other. <laughs> oh. uh, she no. conquers with cuteness. Cuteness conquers all. Not love, but cuteness. If, cuteness. If I were to be put in that situation, I got no answer, man. Like I, I also lose. Uh, but poor Twilight. She gets the brunt of the. <laughs> uh, she got hustled. She got hustled. She got. She got hustled, and, and all the main six, basically, they all get the same answers. That this Shadowlock fellow is hanging out in the library. So they go in, storm, and make a ruckus in the library, Twilight, how could you? Yep, you should know better. And, well, talking about knowing better, it seems that Shadowlock has stands. Has tans? Stands. Uh, something Jojo. Uh, Seppi, why didn't you back me up? Oh. Uh. I'm so sad. Oh, now. wait, stands. I thought you said tans. Like, what? What? Yeah. That, what? Yeah, looking at his complexion, I don't think he's getting enough sun. <laughs> no, definitely not. That's why I was confused. Like, wait, what? Oh, stands! Uh, but, hey, who on to yeah. book two. We got to beat Geo again, but with our stands. Yes, yeah, so you, you Jojoites 
<laughs> I do not understand your language. Uh, we conf- we will get you into JoJo, or I will get you into JoJo if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> well, f- side note, I'll be h- hitting up Nightmare Nights for the final time this year. There is an anime store in Texas just down the way where I usually do my Christmas shopping for my friends. I shall see if I can procure a JoJo's collection there. Awesome. Do, go ahead, man. So with all this information in hand, and uh, with Fluttershy being assertive but quiet, which is their specialty, they confront Shadowlock, who basically says, I'm going to attack you with all this fiction. And he summons monsters from various books. We've got Frankenstag. We've got a Cyclops that kind of looks like he's related to Bulk Biceps. I know. <laughs> and we have what I assume is Pony Cthulhu. <laughs> No, no, man, no, no, man. It it ain't Pony Cthulhu. It's just Cthulhu. Like, Cthulhu... Cthulhu, Cthulhu... Cthulhu... I don't know. Gets, uh, Cthulhu goes to every place where he is summoned. He is that powerful. I don't know. Those tentacles look a little cuter than the average variety. They're taking a special interest in Rainbow Dash and Pinky. Let the inappropriate fan art commence. Oh, no. Hijinks ensue as... Uh, the Frankenstag tries to correct Applejack uh, that he is not Frankenstag, but rather it's Monster. True that. People do forget about it. Frankenstag was um, the the creator, not the monster. No, oh, but who's the real monster? Or that's how it was with Frankenstein. That's the first thing I learned when we studied um, that story. True that. Mm. And Rarity anyway. comments on the Cyclops' breath. But truly, the biggest thing is that anyone... Rainbow says that anyone who connects with this tentacled mass uh, will be driven crazy. <laughs> so Pinkie Pie grabs the nurse's tentacle, wraps it around her head, and says, I'll show you crazy. <laughs> now, Norman, I respect that you, you don't like how Pinky was presented in at least issue one and maybe the whole story. But I will admit... But that if was Pinkie, funny. It, yeah, if Pinky has the power to drive even eldritch horrors bonkers... <laughs> That's something to respect and fear. Yeah, this is what I, I, I do, and I do like this, um, scene here or this picture here. I do like it. But this is what I mean when the writers just didn't know what to do with Pinky. Mm. And so the battle ensues, even releasing, uh, Martians. Oh, God. <laughs> From, Martians? War of, the, War of the Worlds, eat your heart out. They're being invaded by Martians. Oh, no. And so, of all things, uh, Twilight, of course, figures out how to fast forward to the end of the stories, which, of course, eliminates their opponents. The Marsh Hands all sneeze themselves out of existence. Frankenstag monster, got to be specific, Mm -hmm. is frozen, which I don't remember the end of Frankenstein. Yeah, I remember that. That's pretty accurate to how it went. But mostly, um, in Frankenstein, it ended at the beginning. Like, the whole entire beginning of Frankenstein was a flashback where Frankenstein, the creator, was in the Arctic trying to get away from the monster. Ah. Which he created. Sucks to be him. (laughs) Yeah, and also Cthulhu gets, well, dragged into the ground. I I, I don't know. I always figured he was running from Pinky. (laughs) No, come back. I have so much more to show you. <laughs> it's like, no, thank you. We're good. We're good. But anywho, the Cyclops unicorn remains, and he volunteers to help clean up if he doesn't have to go back to the wherever it is he came from. I just like him saying, have or and hear me out on this. Instead of banishing me forever, I could help clean up. And the librarian says, you know what? I like that plan. Okay. Exactly. This is a good plan. This is best plan. Yeah. Best plan. And I just like the idea of there's a Cyclops pony out there still helping the librarian out. It, he exists. Somewhere out there, Cyclops pony is there for all of us. And I, I, I do want him to be referenced in a future comic. This is a background pony. <laughs> my little Cyclops, my little Cyclops. <laughs> Maybe he and the librarian hook up, and you know they have a bunch of. Oh no! Oh god, no! They have a little board of children. Put that in my head. (laughs) Yeah. My little shipping. My little shipping. Is that going to be part of your next video? Just randomly shipping the Cyclops and the monster, or the librarian? Oh no! I I still need to randomly ship uh, Kichi with Prince Rutherford. Oh god. (laughs) (laughs) Oh boy! 
I can't wait to tell her all about no, it. No, don't. It's no spoilers. No eh, spoilers? Eh, 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 eh. Oh, believe me, she'll be spoiled rotten over this. Anywho. <laughs> so, but now, now begins the chase. They have to catch up with Shadowlock, which means breaking off to the three most important historical sites in Equestria, one of which is apparently Cheerilee's classroom. Okay. There's books, history books. So, yeah. But of all the high-value targets, is Ponyville's elementary school that important? Yes. I, no comment? We must think of the children! Oh, the oh, children. Oh, someone think of the children! And Twist here is a trooper. Like any other student in school, you don't read educational books while you're in school. You read comic books. The art of the colored pages and the lines. That's what you read in school, baby. We here on the MBS show do not condone that you actually read comic books in class. Unless you're in a comic book class, then yeah. Yes, that then that seems rather appropriate. <laughs> yes. Although I, I do like that Diamond Tiara may have reformed, but she's right to ask, what does this have to do with learning? <laughs> True that. And Twist says, will this be on the test? <laughs> and Apple Bloom is all like, oh, oh, I can be the star class for a change. Yeah. Because Applejack is just teaching apples. <laughs> apples. <laughs> and of course, apples, apples, apples. But then apples. we get we get the most unlikely cameo of all, the return of the maniac. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I enjoy this like, one. Dang it, Twist, this is why you don't read comic books in class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do enjoy this one. And Fluttershy and Applejack seems to be useless. <laughs> well... I mean, the last time they had the main, they fought the maniac. Fluttershy had to Hulk out. She can't do that right now. True, true. But that causes a mess. Meanwhile, uh, Rarity and Pinky are at the Manhattan Chronicle, where Pinky delivers some pretty scathing uh, commentary on newspaper comics. Yes. I thought these were supposed to be funny, and it's Dilbert. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, oh, sh- shots fired. It's an acquired taste. Uh, yeah, Silver, right. you need to be educated in order to read them. Oh, yes, so educated to read Dilbert. <laughs> I know, I'm kidding. Oh, uh, well. But I just, I just were like, wow, wow, I guess no comic camaraderie here. <laughs> uh, no, no comic camaraderie? Com- Anybody? <laughs> Oh, you. <laughs> uh, but still, um, their plan is to take care of the vault, take care, make sure that Shadowlock doesn't come in. 20 minutes later. Minutes Hi, later. Shadow Lock. <laughs> Hi Shadow Lock and he's just he's wiping things out but bringing all first of all good grief and good gravy there are actually pony mobsters who murder <laughs> yeah we have a pony with his hooves locked in cement presumably deceased mm-hmm. I'm just trying to picture this this friendly loving equestria is like yeah you need some cement shoes I think you need a bath <laughs> Uh, and I, I see um, a Russian gangster pony in his Adidas track suit. So, yay. And yeah. Inkwell is there. Yeah. Uh, the false reporter from the Pegasus. Good thing Applejack and Fluttershy didn't bump into her. Oh, yeah, her. No wonder she looks familiar. After all, she believed in flying pigs. Yeah, true that. And also we get to see that pony that has a huge crush on Rarity. What's his name? Oh, Trenderhoof. Yeah, Trender. He's there too. Oh. No, I thought it was a crush on Applejack. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, my bad. He's, he's got a crush on the apples. Apples, apples, apples! Apples! Uh, so, um, crime is a thing in Equestria way back when, so, okay. Wait, way back when, just my mind, my reality, it's reset. Anywho, in a sort of a non-event, Twilight and Rainbow go to Colonial Winniesburg, <laughs> where Twilight buys out the entire blessed uh, gift shop for everyone. Guess that's her Christmas shopping right there. Uh, that's because Rainbow Dash had to shoot the cannon. She just had to shoot the cannon. Uh, just had to. Absolutely had to. By the way, when you look at the um, first cult uh, with the barrels... What, what does he look familiar to you guys? The first cult. Well, I I recognize the um, Prince he Drew. Prince he Drew, really? Yeah, yeah. She's the one paying oh, attention yeah, to the guy yeah, talking yeah. about pickling food. But 
Nancy Drew, you mean Nancy Drew. No, no, it's、uh, one of the Friends Forever. Yeah, in, in Equestria, it's Prancy Drew.、Yeah. She looks like Velma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that, that scene there, if you look at that guy, who does he remind you of?、Uh, I, I'd have to look back at the.、Um... Wait, does that, does that look like you, Norman? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, but to me, it sounds like before refrigerator spells, Pony had to pickle their food. If I had a girlfriend,、oh, she'll kill me. <laughs> it reminds me of him. Oh my god.、Uh, sorry. Oh my god, no. It, it reminds me almost of a h e b l e Oh yeah, the h e e l b i l l y pony. The one that likes rarity too. Oh.、Huh? Poor Hazy Turner. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, but he's in the reenactment center. <laughs> nah, but if you guys、uh, watch The Simpsons, you remember the、um, fast food guy? Yeah, it's him. <laughs> He reminds me of him. Oh, I know him. Yeah. <laughs> Funny thing, I just now like stopped watching The Simpsons, and I did not get that. I feel so terrible. <laughs> How could you? How could you, Sapphire? I stopped, I stopped watching. watching- By the way, are we ever going to talk about my social life? <laughs> <laughs> But anywho, carrying on. You're a viewer. Social lives are forbidden. <laughs> oh, well. But anywho, Twilight and Company regather, and I did love this little bit of fourth wall. Fluttershy says, you know, the CMC are just get, lost their entire education for the past year. They're going to have to repeat a grade. And that's why they're still a cheerleaders class. It's like, how many years do they have to take? I don't know. But the, the line that Fluttershy says was like, like, I know you mentioned it, Silver, but I just had to read it、uh, verbatim. And I fear those poor cutie mark crusaders may be stuck in the same grade for a strangely long time. And this will be why. <laughs> It's like, hmm. <laughs> People always complain, oh, why are the CMCs stuck in the same grade? Like, don't they advance in higher? They're too stupid. Nope, it's、yeah. this reason why. <laughs> It's like we can blame Shadowlock for parental locking the CMC. Yep. Guess you, Shadowlock. Guess you. But Twilight's got one final trick the Cantalot Museum and the History of Equestria, as painted by Spike, because clearly no professionals work at this place. There, there is. There is a professional. A professional、Boy. who didn't set up any security <laughs> and, basic, and basically said, To Twilight, yeah, you can have a sleepover in this priceless exhibit, including T Rex、uh, brother's pendant, which I guess changed back from a key. I don't know. No wonder that looks familiar.、Mm-hmm. And oh, if you take a look, see to the left, I think that could be Star Soul's hat. Or one of them.、Mm-hmm. Or it could be、Ooh. the wizard's hat from Mickey Mouse thing. No one gets in to see the wizard.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he he he. We. He he he.、So, Shadowlock, however, is one step ahead because while the ponies are all having mummy dress ups and having a slumber party, Shadowlock sneaks in to erase all the history, except that Twilight is there to stop him. Yep. And she,、oh、figures, she figures they can finally talk things out because, you know, her friends are in the next room, only they're not. Oh, ho, ho. They've been trapped in representations of the past. Dun, 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 dun. Da, da. Yes. And. Uh, Shadowlock just sneaks by like, haha, their pony be sleeping, I'll cast a spell on them. I'll put a spell on you. Uh, and Twilight says, uh、uh-uh, uh, back off. You ain't going anywhere now. Well, but she doesn't know her friends have been,、uh, abducted. So, thanks Shadowlock, you're, you're such a good guy. Uh, yeah, thank you man, like, you're, you're a cool dude. <laughs> but, issue 53, I have to point something out, the cover, it's, Awesome looking. Oh, as, as Shadowlock is erasing the comic itself? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just have to point that out. We, we rarely talk about the covers for the issues, but this one needs to be pointed out because it, you, you know, you have your standard,、um, logo, and then instead of a full page,、um, cover, you, you'll get panels, like it's a story being told. And it says, if we don't stop him, he could, Erase every book in the Questra, including this one, and stating the comics itself. Like, oh, go, no. <laughs> and all the fans are like, yay, or no, it depends, because everyone has different opinions. But I do love that they also stylized Twilight with the,、uh, with the old timey printing of comics. Yes, optical blending at its most raw. Oh, that's what it's called? Okay. 
Well, that's what the eye does. When you look at your screen, you're looking at little dots, pixels. Mm -hmm. When you look at a magazine, you're looking at little dots. But your eye blends it together to create the image, and that is known as optical blending. Ah, and the coloring too. I see, I see, I see. That is fascinating. And now, now you know. The more you and knowing know. is half no, the battle. No, I don't know. I missed it. <laughs> well, that see me after class, Miss Sapphire. Okay. But anyway, Twilight is finally getting to talk to Shadowlock. Now she's been trying to get his attention this entire arc. Just have him stop and explain himself. And all he's ever like is, I've got to do this. But he's suddenly willing to talk to her because she just keeps popping up like a bad penny. <laughs> Meanwhile, Applejack and Pinky have to deal with prehistoric cave ponies. Rarity and Rainbow are in a mummy's tomb with gold on all sides. Rarity is just flipping out. And blamer. they want to meet Queen Cleopatra. Yeah. And Spike uh, is in the worst possible spot. Dragon slaying knights. Yeah. He's fun. <laughs> and Fluttershy. If there's going to be a dragon, of course Fluttershy is not going to want to be there, but she'll be forced into it. And there's no way out. They all have to fend off whoever's attacking them. But here at last, we get to hear Shadowlock's spiel. Now, there's two things about, uh, let's see, this would be around page 13, I believe, on the PDFs. It's where Twilight finally asks Shadowlock, why are you erasing history? And there's a couple things. One, it isn't until the third chapter that I get to see a height comparison between Shadowlock and Twilight. This guy's huge. Oh, well, I wouldn't say huge. I say he's tall. How huge is he? I'm, nah, he's big Macintosh levels of height. Yeah, he's tall, but ain't huge. We Okay, Trouble Hooves is, is huge. He seems to be a standard um, stallion built, like, you know, Earth Pony. For a unicorn, he is big. But Twilight, as an alicorn, is as tall as a stallion. You know what? I, I ain't going to go in deep about pony sizes because there's no... Definitive. Yeah, definitive. There's nothing set in stone about what pony sizes are. If you're going to quote that size doesn't matter, believe me, <laughs> you're in for disappointment. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah, indeed. The other thing, however, is that when we started this comic, Shadowlock's eyes were completely concealed behind his mane, and then they were concealed by Shadow. Now, however, you get to see his eyes, his lovely green eyes. Which is pretty disappointing. Why? Did, what, oh, wait, that this... he's not completely edgy and has green eyes? Or are you worried that this is like Vinyl Scratch and people all wanted red eyes? Nah, the, the, the only reason why is because when you have a mysterious character like White eyes, like white um, iris or whatever it is, like the turtles when they're in battle mode, you're thinking like, okay, this guy means business. And when he comes down or when he's with Twilight and willing to talk, like I'm thinking that he has a plan B to, well, at least try and take down the Prince of his friendship and try to push her into a book or something like that. But nah, we didn't get that. We, we, we get a sit down and it's not even in book three. It was in the end of book two where we get to see his eyes. Well, heavily shadowed. This is this is where they're finally shown without any shading. It's him being his most honest, in a way. Anyway, in a way. We learn that, one, he comes from the area of Sonambula, which takes on different meaning given what we saw in Daring Don't. That's for later. But he found a book saying that he's a descendant of an ancient evil. So he started freaking out, wondering if this monster was going to come back or if he might become said monster. And so he panicked and started trying to erase all the history, hoping that if he erased the memory of this being, it could never find its way back. Which, honestly, is not a very good, spe not a very good or smart uh, strategy. That's like a little kid huddling in a corner and covering their eyes saying, if I don't see it, the danger's not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, sounds about right. And meanwhile, completely oblivious to all this, Twilight uh, doesn't know that her friends are in danger. But uh, Queen Cleopatra does make her appearance in all her Egyptian glory. Pinkie Pie gets a party going for the uh, cave ponies. And Fluttershy gives a turn talking to an actual dragon that has all the knights scrambling up the uh, tapestries <laughs> as he lights the place on fire. But I just like that Fluttershy face. She's like... Really now? Like, do we really need to do this? Like, do I need to put a dragon down? 
Like that face there. Yes. It's like, oh, you've been a bad boy. <laughs> Does Fluttershy have to smack a drink? <laughs> As long as it's a Malfoy. <laughs> Ooh, we're getting crossover shipping. <laughs> uh, oh, I like this. <laughs> now, and Rarity defeats Cleopatra by using the bandages to create beautiful accessories. Yeah. And apparently, I find this interesting, Cleopatra had Anubis-style guards. Yep, those doggos are cute. <laughs> And one felt that Rarity helped her find her personal style. Aww, and he, yeah. he looks rather disappointed. It's like, oh, I like this. Tail wag. And then suddenly, oh, it's gone. And Fluttershy gets everyone into a hug circle. Yeah. Oh, I, I like that one guard's line. Says, okay, now this feels awkward. <laughs> but Twilight, meanwhile, is actually getting through to Shadowlock because she points out something important. You just erased how this evil was defeated, genius. La dee da. Hope you're happy with that. And Twilight discovers that even while he was coming around, he still stole a scroll from her, and she was she's just betrayed. I mean, I fully expect if Shadowlock does make an appearance in the show, the sh- the shippers and the anti shippers are going to come out of the woodwork. Oh, but then no, the- Twilight's being shipped with a guy again. How dare he steal our wife? Again. Again. At least you can't say Shadowlock is overly perfect. Oh, true that. Wait, wait, at least um, Saitwai got Timber. Timber! <laughs> it's going down. She's yelling, Timber! Oh, dear. Seth, that takes on just a very different meaning with in that context. <laughs> yeah, I really don't. I've, I, I don't pay attention to pop music, so ignore me. Oh, you, you sick little monkey. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so the Remain 5 and Spike break in to confront Shadowlock. And I find this funny. When Rainbow Dash calls her Shadow, calls him Shadow Jerk, he's like, oh, that's just hurtful. <laughs> that That's the most hurtful Shadow Jerk? Wow, dude. You really need to get out more. Be insulted more. There's a whole world of put-downs you could experience. Yeah, but it's Equestria. Everybody's nice. <laughs> I, I think the gangster ponies disprove that. Well, that was a few years ago. They they didn't exist anymore. They don't exist anymore. Oh, oh, you think you think they could eliminate crime? That's no, they, that's adorable. They want you to think. That's what they want you to think. But anyway, we get the usual. This has become the standard fare for My Little Pony. Philip says, "Oh, I'm so sorry. No legal charges are brought against him." I mean, honestly, Rarity and Applejack should be pressing this guy for tuition fees <laughs> because the Crusaders <laughs> have to repeat a grade. Uh, yep. <laughs> Indeed. But he's just like, I'll go off and uh, I'll try to find information on how they defeated my evil ancestor. Also find out how exactly what did my family line continue if he was that bad. So the ponies go home, and it's one of those maybe too clean an ending. Everyone's forgiven. All crimes are pardoned. There's no consequence, except that Twilight never asked which villain this guy was facing. And so at the very end, we see a pony just trying to... Uh, Get some antiques out. Again, this artwork is done by Tony Fleeks. <laughs> so, of course, the Thunder Gremlins make an appearance. Yay, Thunder yeah. Gremlins. <laughs> but we see we see this evil ancestor in just a black and white, not even black and white, just a line drawing. And the promise that the shadows will return. But we don't we don't know much about this thing that looks like a changeling meets the darkness. <laughs> yep. Charlie Murphy. And okay, I I want to ask, who the ancestor for Shadowlock? Who do you think it would be? Say Amber. Well, the, this like this villain here. Song. Well, okay, this may count as a spoiler, however. Okay. The synopsis for the end of the season has come out. Oh my! And they're saying that's the Pony of Shadows. That's the Pony of Shadows, but Sombra is Shadow. Well, remember in Castlemania. Mm-hmm. They said that there was the Pony of Shadows, a being that was supposedly a remaining part of Nightmare Moon's evil magic. <gasps> Ooh, I am liking this. I don't know. Now I know. Thank you, Silver. I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> what? You can't kill me. You asked for it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but still, but still, yeah. You'll be cool with Sombra, but no. Oh, but I, I'm sorry. You, you, you First, you, you threatened my life, and then you were like, we're cool? No, we are not cool. That's the opposite of cool. I'm feeling very uncool about this situation. It's not cool. 
I mean, Norman, you really did ask for it, so <laughs> I, I wouldn't be complaining. Uh, but still, yeah, but still. <laughs> Norman's all like, spoil it for me, baby. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> spoil it for me, baby. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and all the ghosts. Oh, my God, no. Oh, my God. So, no, don't ever make that again. Make that reference. <laughs> and all the bron- bronies say, I'm pretty fly for a white guy. Kill me! <laughs> Uh, and oh, don't, be, don't be hating, player. I did not ask for this is the difference, old man. <laughs> it, it's true. <laughs> but it's because you didn't ask for it that it's more fun. Uh, and comic ends. Aye, aye, aye. And comic ends. Yes, we, we're we now... This seems like a prelude to the season finale. And it seems like it. If indeed the Pony of Shadows is this evil ancestor. Or if they just got their terms mixed up. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, when it comes to what we're going to get in the end, like, if you're lucky enough, Poland would be showing them early, so probably. Eh? I don't, I don't consider that lucky. I don't like this this <laughs> early release nonsense that has dogged all of Season 7. I know. I know. Uh, it's It's felt terribly uneven. Mm-hmm. But here's what I want to point out. If the Pony of Shadows really is a remnant of Nightmare Moon's evil magic, and if it somehow had descendants, does that not make Shadowlock related, a great-grandson, a Princess Luna? Kind of, if you think about it. But the Pony of Shadows, like, what is it, actually? Like, what is it? See, see, here's, here's where I get to asking where, okay, Pony of Shadows, is it... Something like Dracula or some kind of force entity like Shadow T monster, and I, I don't know. You see what I mean here? I'm not sure. We'll, we'll we have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Then more theory crafting can go, and if it is related to Nightmare Moon, or yeah, you know what? Too much unknown here. Too much unknown. Too much unknown. Don't make but... your brain hurt. Indeed. But just, oh, but just think, I love the possibilities though. Luna's great descendant is, gets shipped with Twilight Sparkle, which makes Twilight, Twilight could become Luna's granddaughter. What? Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> but you, you, you do know that, um, Twilight and Luna slash Celestia are related, right? Well, not by blood, no. Yeah, but still, they're related. But as, as like cousins, because Cadence married, Shining Armor and Kids was adopted by Luna again, or uh, by Celestia. So again, Jerry, Jerry, <laughs> this family tree makes no sense. Indeed. Indeed. I mean, I know royalty had this tendency to intermarry to keep the bloodline pure, but really, we're just doubling back at this point. True, true. Uh, but anyway. Final thoughts, and I believe Sapphire. Why don't you lead us into closing? Because we've, we've kept you... In the second spot, too long. You deserve some time at the forefront. Oh, oh, um, um, episode, or not episode, um, um, see, this is what happens when you put me on the spot right away. <laughs> <laughs> the, the comic was a good read, like, even though I had to skim through it, as I always do with these shows. I thought it was interesting, Sheen Shallock, or pff, cough, cough, parental lock. <laughs> Although, now knowing that information, it's like, oh, why I, I actually want to see where the story goes. Like, where that whole Pony of Shadows thing goes. I'd like to see how that works so. out. So, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Are you happy? Yes, very. Okay. The shizzle. <laughs> Dang it. You walk into that one. <laughs> and normally, my, my existence oh. will lead me to having myself walk into that one so I wouldn't be too surprised. I'll <laughs> get it's, grumpled every time. It is the way of things. The way of the Force. Hmm. Anywho, Norman, what are your overall thoughts on this thing? Um, for me, this comic was interesting. Knowing the whole fact that this comic is related to Season 7 intrigues me. It makes me wonder, like, is this going to be the final villain for the season? Like, what is he? What could he be? What are his powers? What are his skill sets? I mean, I really want to know. And the way that the show is handling it, it's pretty interesting. From this beginning of the season... The show or the comics series? Both. Like, like I mentioned earlier, that season 7 and starting from issue 51, there's a lot of crossover going on. 
So, knowing that this comic is related to Season 7 in some shape or form, I can't wait to see what happens. At the same time, can we please get some consistent air dates? No more early releases, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that is also true. And th- for the story itself, it was interesting. I do like the story, but the structure and the way some characters were written, especially Pinkie Pie, it got annoying at some points. But in the end, it was a good read. Would I uh, tell you, would I recommend you buying a single issue of this? No, but if you can get a trade paperback, go ahead. Hmm. I haven't kept up on the trade paperback releases. I'm sure we're close. Um, I think so. I mean, I'm not a huge paperback guy because I buy the comics when they're out. So I, I don't really know. But a friend of mine does buy the comics in trade. So he keeps up to date that way. Oh, there you go. And as for myself, I enjoyed this comic. Uh, after the, the frustrating ending to Chaos Theory, I appreciate this more because Twilight made an effort to read Shadowlock throughout the arc. And so it makes sense when he finally says, okay, fine, let's talk. You you clearly aren't going to go away unless I heed you. The one thing that jumped out at me is the repetitive cycle of the issues. Main six go to a new location. They pair off. Hijinks ensue as they, bat, as they deal with the situation. Regroup, new plan, start over. And once you recognize that pattern, it's hard to see sort of a genuine escalation of events. It just feels like, well, here's the newest mini-adventure. But in that way, each character got to show their best traits. And given that sometimes the main six or Twilight's friends just get forgotten in the larger scale, it's nice to see them all contributing. So I thought this was pretty balanced. And even some of the show series premieres or season premieres could learn a thing or two from giving everyone a chance to have a role. Goodness knows, the last couple seasons, the main six really haven't gotten to be individuals during a crisis, not like with the Discord or Nightmare Moon arcs. Mm. True, true. And so, therefore. So, enjoyable. I'd like to see where this goes, what the Pony of Shadows is, and what it looks like in full color. Because right now, I have a hard time figuring out what on this being is armor, and what is its genuine self. And if I'm not mistaken, um, is the Legend of Magic somehow related to the ending? Very possibly. I don't want to spoil too much, especially since we haven't we, we're still waiting on Mage Meadowbrook's yeah. uh, issue. Oh, wait. Mage Meadowbrook's? It's out. I think that's next week. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm thinking about the Friendship is Magic issue. Yeah. See, this is really confusing for me. Meiji Page gets her own Legends of Magic issue number six next week. Mm, all right, all right, all right. Like I mentioned before, a lot of crossover going on because in issue 58 of Friendship is Magic, uh, Mage was there, and in the recent episode, she was there, and now she gets her own book. Wow. Yep. She's, well, a healer usually is more active than a warrior. Yep. Which I find a unique statement in and of itself. But that is something for down the road. For now, I believe we've given Shadow Play its, its full due. We've weighed in on it. But Norman, what can we look forward to in the next podcast? Well, next week we are going to review Season 7, Episode 11. Not asking for trouble, bro. <laughs> uh, oh, joy. The <laughs> yak. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I hope by that point you can already ship Kichi, was it? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Ne- stay tuned to the next podcast, Kichi. <laughs> we will ship you with Rutherford something awful. I hope she can be on. I hope she can be on for that. <laughs> Oh, we should is, is this what happens when she gives you a cane? <laughs> she gets shipped with Prince Ru- Rutherberg or who, oh, yeah. whatever his name is. She gave me a hook cane at BronyCon so I can reach over, grab Rutherford, pull him over, reach over, grab her, pull her over. Boom, instant shippage. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, boy. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a uh, given. Yep, yep. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be doing that next week, I hope. <laughs> Yay. Uh, but anywho, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. And with every support, you'll get early access to the MBS show review and discussion podcast and also deleted content and exclusives. And also a huge thank you from me. And in talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Slurker Cat and Dricatoria, Starstream, and also myself, Lag. Once again, thank you guys for the awesome support. And Nem, thank you for, well, sponsoring this comic because you are awesome thank you man yeah. 
And so I think that will cover our thanks to our patron supporters, our thanks to you, the listeners. We've had a fun time. But now, and join us next week for another episode of the MBS show as we review the ponies and drive people insane. Beep. Totally insane. By encouraging parental law. Oh, God, no. So, for the MBS show, I am Cecil Quill. And I am Norman Sanzo. And I am Sapphire Hartson. And we're saying adios. See ya. Bye bye. <laughs> I wonder if Shadowlock's spell works on Braille. If not, he has to bump it up in his priorities. <laughs> <laughs>